My arrow works 30cc extra 260 freestyle. We'll crank off a nice tight snap roll on takeoff when there's no speed involved. Keep the speed down and the roll rate's not bad at all. But crank up the speed and the roll rate slows down noticeably. The only good excuse for this is the aerodynamic pressure is stalling the servos at speed. Go slower and that pressure is dramatically reduced and the roll rate goes up. Now this is the power system that was in the plane. It's a pair of 7.4 volt batteries, my receiver. This is a battery backer system that lets me use the two batteries and separates them in case one of them goes bad. Part of my problem is that this battery system and the ignition kill system below it are add-ons, so there's a lot of extra connections in this system. Along with adding additional possible points of failure, there's also current drop across all these connections. Also, all of the battery power is going through these outside systems into the receiver and then the receiver is trying to supply power to the servos. And to run this battery system you need to have two switches, one for each battery pack, and there's more voltage drop here. This is the Smartfly Power Expander Sport Plus system that I'm going to install on my plane to fix all of this. This jumper wire is for the ignition kill system that comes with this. And there's some really tough hook and loop material that you get for putting the receiver onto the board. And this is the fiber optic cable for the ignition kill. It's important to remember that this fiber optic cable is the only thing connecting the receiver to the ignition system. This way there's no chance of passing any interference from the ignition back to the receiver. And this is the fiber optic receiver that actually connects to the ignition system and is powered by the ignition system's battery. I know all these connections look scary, but they're actually very easy. The label by all the signal wires that we actually plug into the receiver tell you where on the rest of the board to plug in the servos. Everything plugs into these rails on the outside of the board, and you can see all of the ports are labeled. And this layout really makes this system easy to install. The E, F, G, and H ports are for the servos, and you notice that there's two connections for each one. Smartfly does this to be as flexible as possible, particularly with the programmable servos. For instance, you could put both elevator halves into one port and use one channel on the radio. Then with your programming, you can match these servos so they work properly for your setup and you only use one channel. And this is the power access panel that's actually the only switch in this system. The green LED comes on when the system's powered up and this pin is what actually activates the system. With the pin in its socket, no part of the power system will come on. And it even tells you on here that you got to pull this out before you can fly. That should be obvious when nothing will work. They even give you an extra one of these pins in case you lose one. The two round ports are for charging and batteries, and they give you plugs for those. And all of these wires get plugged into ports on the board. This is the access panel for the ignition system. It has an LED that shows you when the ignition is armed, a charge jack for the ignition battery, and a fuel dot. Since nearly all of us are going to have fuel dots on our planes, we can put this panel in where we had the fuel dot, you don't have any extra holes in the airplane. Plus, this fuel dot's probably better than what a lot of us have in our planes right now. And here's my power expander board screwed into the plane on a pair of spruce rails that I made up and then glued them to the floor. I've already tested all the servos to make sure they work. Now I've got to start bundling up the wires to keep them away from the rudder's pull-pull system. I use a pair of 7.4 volt 5000 milliamp packs that plug directly into the power expander board. I know 10,000 milliamps is a bit much, but when I do get to the field I like to fly a lot and this gives me a good cushion. In here I've got the wires bundled up so that it looks a little neater and everything stays away from that pull-pull system. I don't want to nail a rudder and unplug one of the ailerons or something. I made sure that none of the wires are tight. They're just secured so they can't hang down into that pull-pull system. Most of us will have to cut the fiber optic cable down to size. We just want to make sure that we get a good clean square end. And here's me not fully understanding a fiber optic system. I couldn't figure out why the light kept coming on and off, and I thought I had a short someplace. 
Then I realized that the receiver, the fiber optic cable, was pointing up towards the light bulb on the ceiling, and that was tripping the system. And now with everything installed, I can pull the pin and see if this whole system works. I have the ignition kill on my gear switch with the on position being pulled towards me. I think it's harder to accidentally shut the motor off in flight this way. And now we get to find out if I'm giving the servos enough power. This is the old roll rate right here. And this is the new one. Here again the old rate. And the new rate. It's visibly different. You could also tell that a lot of other maneuvers are also tighter and more pronounced. Everything just feels more crisp and tighter. And I think it's important to point out that all this increase in performance is in addition to all the safety features the SmartFly system brings to the plane. And that's why all of my bigger planes have the SmartFly Power Expander Plus system in them.